Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. Because, well, sex matters. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy. All right, welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 71, and it's titled How to Be More Feminine. Okay, Almost every episode, I start out with, this is going to be a fun episode, and then I give you a reason why it's going to be a fun episode. <laughs> and what I realized today when I was you know, thinking about what the introduction was going to be is, I actually do think all of our episodes are fun. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you why this one is either going to be really fun or it's going to be really triggering. Mm, yeah. So we'll see which category you fall into. <laughs> but the idea about being feminine, especially in today's atmosphere, can be quite triggering for some people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, there's a whole push in society to strip gender out of everything and pretend it doesn't exist and say that men and women are exactly the same, even though there's very obvious physical differences. <laughs> so... Um, we're going to dive into that topic today and uh, you might get triggered and you might be sitting there going, hell yes to everything we say. Absolutely. And I think some of these things absolutely need to be uh, shared out loud. And we know that it will be controversial. You may not have to agree with all of our ideas or you may learn some new things. But I think it takes courage to be willing to speak about this. And I'm proud of us for being willing to dip our toes into this. And remember, this is a small conversation of something really big and that there is so much more we can dive in even deeper than what we're going to do. Uh, but this is to start a conversation. Wait, what, what are we dipping into? what <laughs> oh kevin <laughs> <laughs> so before we get started uh let's give a shout out to our sponsor this episode is brought to you by power and mastery the mo most complete sexual training for men to develop your stamina boost your confidence and enhance your sexual abilities if you haven't yet done it go to powerandmastery.com to check out all free courses and this is really going to help you seriously change your sex life and even though the courses are for men um we have some women who send their men to them or they do the sexual mastery kind of together. He watches some of the videos and they do some of them together. Um, so it will benefit you both. So go to powerandmastery.com. Absolutely. And you'll start to realize pretty quickly as we get into this topic that uh, being more feminine is very closely related to being more masculine, <laughs> which is a whole other episode that we will do. So uh, the courses really fit in there because if you want to have a woman who truly embraces her femininity, you have to be a man who truly embraces his masculinity. And we'll get into more of that later. And if you want one of those men who is a really strong masculine man, you also need to know how to be feminine. And so I think that this episode will be beneficial to both men and women that you will gain insight and values. Well, all right. So, yeah, now that you've said that, let me just say, if you're a man and you just tuned into this and you're like, oh, this is all about women, so I'm going to skip this episode, don't be fucking stupid, okay? <laughs> uh, just put it that way. We're giving you the, the rule book, the playbook. You want to know about your woman? Listen to this damn episode. <laughs> don't think this is just about women. So this was inspired by one of our listeners, um, Allison, and what she said, she sent us something and we're just going to read it because I think it's going to set a good context for the conversation that we're having. She said, I used to think that being feminine is being helpless, a little whiny, short dress, red lips, dick cleavage, too much skin all the time, French made type, not too smart, many of those things I don't associate myself with and don't even like. I hear you, Allison. But then I tried to think of my personal positive associations with being feminine, and then it became better and more fun. Yeah, and you know, thank you, Allison, for, for putting that into words, because I think that 
in our modern society that there's this misconception that that's what being feminine is about. Mm. And then and then on the other hand, you have the opposite misconception about what the whole sort of what people call the third wave feminist movement thinks being feminine is. And honestly, in my opinion, sorry to piss some of you off, you're both wrong. <laughs> Let's just put it out there. You're both wrong. And this is a conversation that I have over and over with every woman, basically, who wants to work with me. Um, I think we lack really good role models. It's so difficult to find women that are so inspiring. Because if we look in the past and we see the 50s housewife model, for most, it's not going to be something that's appealing. And then you can start to see the modern woman and the super feminist women. And oftentimes they can be stuck in being really angry, mad at the masculine, angry at the world and have so much energy dance that they attacked everything and like i don't want to be that either and ironically they're actually rather masculine yes and they're all about the feminine and so it's so hard to find those role models but we are out there um I see myself as one of them i know i inspire a lot of women and i wasn't always like i wouldn't say as feminine as i am now i actually grew up considering myself being a tomboy and i was a i was a gymnast i was like at a pro level i competed um and, you know trained like three times a week competed on the weekend i have a brother and i would most of the time feel more comfortable being around guys boys at that time and i would do all the things like being a gymnast i would go like hang in the trees and go explore caves and like like do all the stuff really or be on my bike and do like like I was never afraid of doing any of that um, and so I would say that that's kind of like how I grew up and I would associate as a matter of fact I don't know if you know that Kevin but I used to hate the color pink <laughs> actually I did know that about you yeah I refused to have anything pink maybe we should show the listeners your wardrobe now <laughs> <laughs> or any little thing of clothing and my, you know, bottle and this and like this pink everywhere now. But I'm, I'm bringing this up because I wasn't always maybe as comfortable in my feminine essence, in my body and being a woman as I am now. And I had to make some changes and we're going to talk about those in the episode too. And if I did it, you can too. And that's really why I'm sharing that, because if I was able to do that, anyone can do it. Absolutely. <laughs> and we'll talk about why you might want to do that and all that. But before we get to that, so I, I thought it was important. You, you briefly hinted at it just a moment ago. But I want to dive more into it. And what, is it, what does it mean to be feminine today versus maybe the old image of being feminine? So you talked about the old image, right? Mm -hmm. Which is... Um, and you have th what you've uh, broken down into three uh, stages, stages of being feminine. Mm -hmm. And so I would love to go over that a little bit because that really covers what it used to mean, what it kind of morphed into after that, the sort of backlash, the pendulum swing off to the mm -hmm. other side. And then what you believe really is the, uh, I don't want to say the end you know, destination, but the next <laughs> evolution mm. of, of femininity. I love that, that next level, next evolution. All right, so let's start with stage number one. And I called this stage the docile feminine. And to me, it is it is kind of the outdated feminine. And it's that place that a woman can be in where she's like, I need a man. I need somebody to save me. I also call this the princess syndrome. And, you know, because everything that we've learned as kids is like, the Prince Charming is going to come and save you. And it's like somebody else outside of yourself is going to magically make your world better. And this type of woman is feminine. 
but she is also a little bit needy and she can be a pushover and the the relationship that she has with the masculine are definitely not that next level that you're talking about Kevin and it's more like this um, more of a dominant man and then here she is kind of like that pushover or she's a little weak not having opinions not standing up for herself and I think that's what what led women to step into the stage two so so in stage one they probably have a lot of the characteristics that we would consider to be feminine but yeah. they're not empowered yeah. so that speaks more to what Allison was talking about that sort of like weak whiny maybe not too smart kind mm -hmm. of not empowered and just playing with the looks and that's all you've got right yeah absolutely so so okay so then in response to that and this is so <laughs> funny because society does this all the time society swings from one extreme to the next mm -hmm. right so after generations of having that sort of docile stage one of not being empowered and having to stay home and being excluded from mm -hmm. whether it was voting or the workplace or all that stuff we swung way in the other direction into uh, what you would call stage two. Mm -hmm. I've named this one the strong woman, a strong feminine. And it is so empowering to step into this number two because you're realizing that you are responsible for your own life and that you can create your destiny and the world is your oyster and there is so much out there and it's like I don't need a man I can get shit done I can have it all I'm gonna have the kids the career the money the relaxation the skills to have a home and uh, and to be able to trade the stock markets and yes you can and and no you can't <laughs> it's a myth that you can have it all at the same time you can, but there are times in life, if you choose to be a mother, if you want to do it well, you will have to dedicate a certain amount of years that is mostly geared towards mothering. If you choose to have a career, if you really want to do it well, it is the same thing. You have to give a lot of that energy and it's hard to have all of these things. And the way that I see for most of the women who are thriving into that is you have to pick and choose. This is the time to, to be in my motherhood phase or this is the time to be in my career or this is the time for um, exploration or whatever that is. Now, this this is where most women tend to be stuck. So it's the place where you're like, yeah, I've made it. You know, I'm out of this outdated model because there's no way I want to look like my grandmother. And... <laughs> Even though your grandmother was probably actually much happier than you are. That but is, that's a whole other conversation. That is a good point. And, and there's no denying that us having the rights. I mean, it, 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 independently of your gender, I think all humans should have access to the same rights. So that is, I'm just wanting to say that out there. Yeah, so uh, we shouldn't have to say this, but we will <laughs> say it before people criticize us, is that yes, absolutely, we believe that everybody should have the same rights everybody should you know be able to vote everybody should be able to be paid equally and be able to have the same jobs and all of that total 100 percent equality nobody is even debating that absolutely and you can love whoever you want to love just so we clear whether you love men women anything in between right. like that is but a given now that we've stated that <laughs> let's talk about some of the negative side effects mm -hmm. of that that movement yes so when you are in that stage two oftentimes what i've noticed is there is anger associated with it or there is a it's a subtle or sometimes not so subtle way of emasculating all the ones around you and there's definitely a power imbalance or dynamic like there's a fight going on oftentimes there yeah, so the way I would perceive that and the way that I would describe that as a man mm -hmm. is that rather than having a woman step up and be empowered in her femininity, what I see is a lot of women stepping into their masculinity. Mm. So it's no longer I'm an empowered feminine woman. Mm -hmm. It's a I am a masculine woman and I'm going to compete with you on a masculine level. Now, I, I have to cut 
the women who have been in that place some slack because I understand how they got there. Mm -hmm. I I get it. It was a male dominated society, and the reaction to that was okay. If the men are setting the rules of the game, then I'm going to have to play by their rules, which means becoming more masculine.、Mm -hmm. I see how that happened.、Mm -hmm. And I can also say that I don't believe that that was necessary.、Mm -hmm. And that's just my opinion. You know, people can disagree, but I think, <laughs> from from a man's point of view, and and, and you, may, you know, you can maybe also、uh, chime in on this. But I personally think that when when a woman is at her most powerful, when she has the most power she can have, is when she uses. What makes her a woman to be powerful, not when she emulates what makes a man powerful,、mm. right? So, in other words, if a woman, let's say it's my partner, comes to me and wants me to do something, if she gets in my face in a masculine way and tries to like boss me around and tell me what to do, <laughs> all that does is create conflict,、mm -hmm. right? Because now my masculine is being challenged in a competitive way, and 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 my masculine is going to be like, well, fuck that, I'm you're not going to beat me, right? And this、mm -hmm. is the story of like ninety nine percent of the relationships we coach, right?、Mm -hmm. This is what happens, and I don't find that being very powerful because it doesn't most of the time get you what you want.、Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at end results. It may appear more powerful. It may seem like yes, I'm super empowered because I'm standing up for what I want and I'm gonna get it, you know.、Mm -hmm. But what's the end result? The end result is you get pissed off, he gets pissed off, nobody gets what they want, and was that really a powerful move? <laughs> True power, and this is—I don't know if you ever read the book Power Versus Force, right?、Mm -hmm. What I just described was really force.、Mm -hmm. True power is finding ways to get what it is you want or need. That are effective and that actually work,、mm -hmm. and so for me, I find it far more powerful for a woman to embody her femininity、mm -hmm. and to use that femininity to get what she wants. And I don't mean like you know manipulation, put on a low cut dress and have some boobs hang out and show a little leg and and flirt and pretend that you're going to give me sex and you're not really going to give me sex. Like that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> But what I'm talking about is using the feminine qualities, rather of coming and getting in my face and trying to fight with me because I'm going to fight back. That's what I do. I'm a dude, right?、Um, <laughs> that rather than do that, coming to me and using the so the softer techniques of being a woman、mm -hmm. and convincing me. This is this is the beauty of being a woman. You actually convince us as men that we want to do what you want us to do, even if we didn't necessarily really want to. That's the beauty of it, and to me, that's far more powerful than trying to force anything. I love this. I love this, and I think you brought up a lot of different nuances. So I want to go back into the acknowledgement of the, how the feminine has been hurt by the masculine, but we have to understand that men have been hurt by this system too. And as women, if we swing to the other end of the pendulum and become overpowering with our feminine, we can hurt men too. And this weekend, I was just at an event, and this came up in the circle. A man spoke of how he had been traumatized by the feminine too, and and castrated. And this is really that stage too. And to him, he was able to heal、um, through that circle that was happening, that relationship to the feminine.、Um, but because he was a younger man and had grew up maybe with this energy with his mom, that's that that was profoundly dam damaging to him as well. And I, and a lot of women afterwards were talking, and they were like, "I never thought that we hurt men too." And I was like, "Yes." It works both ways, and so oftentimes when you are in that stage number two, in that strong feminine, it has different levels of it, and I go in depth in, into that in my Irresistible Women course. So we don't have time to fully do that today, but there are different levels. They are obvious and not so obvious of ways that we can castrate, we can rob energy, we can disempower. I think, and this is not meant to be a plug for your program per se, but because I helped with some of the material、mm -hmm. of that program from the male point of view, she's 
you know, Celine handles all the, the female stuff. <laughs> but, but to me personally, having been involved in that program and seeing what you do, I think that is probably one of the most empowering pieces of the entire thing is mm-hmm. teaching women what it is they do that emasculates the men. Mm-hmm. Because that piece causes so much disconnect, so much disagreement, mm-hmm. so much conflict in relationships. And you know, this doesn't mean that it's all the woman's fault, by the way, no. because there's plenty of stuff that the men do, and that's a whole <laughs> other topic. We will do a show on how to be more masculine, which we'll talk about those things. <laughs> but the thing that you have to realize is this. They influence and play off each other, mm-hmm. right? So when a woman does something that castrates a man, that causes him to do a certain behavior that's generally not a healthy masculine behavior. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way without going too deep into it. And it's the same thing with the men. When when the man does something that's that's not a good masculine behavior, then that can trigger a woman to do feminine behaviors that are not so healthy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, nothing is in isolation. They work together. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the third stage because now that we really understand that and I'm like, okay, we got it. We want to get out of this, right? I mean, if you're feeling tense, you're like, yeah, okay, this is awful. I want to know. Let me tell you about stage three. (laughs) And if you're thinking, no, this is exactly where I want to be, just hear us out because you might actually want to move past that. (laughs) (laughs) And we're going to give you some how-tos. The third stage is the one that I call the awakened feminine. And this is such a beautiful state because the space that you are in as a woman is, I don't need a man, but I choose to have a man. This is a huge, huge piece because on the outside, it will look similar to the stage one. You won't ha- but in how you interact within yourself and around and on the outside with the man and the woman, all the people in your life, it is very different. You come from a place of co-creation. You come from your best self and invite the masculine to show up in his best self too. And this is what we call the next level relationship. This is what we experienced. We're not stuck in the dynamic like our grandparents. Hey, my grandparents have been together 65 for a year 64 what did i tell you yeah a long time they just told me over 60 years and they love each other and it's really awesome and i also see some of the ways where it's different times like how they've been stuck in some things and what i love is that i feel that kevin and i have that same depth of love that same solid foundation But we have that little something more that i've seen missing in my grandparents where we are both fully expressed. And I I didn't see my grandmother being as expressed as I am. And yes, she has that love and that connection, but I am fully expressed, but I also have a supportive husband in my life, somebody that I can count on. And we created this beautiful dance of the feminine and masculine. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> so so if you had to sum up the awakened feminine, I think you might say something along the lines of a woman who embodies her femininity and yet isn't dependent, mm-hmm. isn't that weak little whiny, like I can't do it on my own. Mm-hmm. See, I think when you when you reach the awakened feminine stage, you go, yeah, I can do it on my own. In fact, I have done it on my own and life is easier if I, if I utilize both of our talents, right? So it's like, yes. yeah, you could go out and trim the bougainvilleas this past weekend. Like, <laughs> I know that you're fully capable of doing that, but do you want to do that? Do you want, no. do you want to be on a tall ladder with a power tool, like getting cut up by thorns and stuff? Like I was, no, you don't want, you could, and you know you could, mm-hmm. but instead you'd rather be like, no, you know what? I, I'm going to leave that to you, the masculine. You, you like to get in there and duke it out with the thorn bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it's really important to to know these distinctions and, and be able to to really receive. Because this is part of the dance is when I do that and I step back and give Kevin the opportunity to do that and show up for me, um, I get to receive his gift of contribution 
And to him, he feels seen and validated in his expression of strength, in his masculinity. And what that creates is a polarity. And what that creates is an awesome sex life. And every time you are battling and you are stuck in that stage two and you, and you know, it's not linear because you've been able to reach stage three doesn't mean you won't fall back into one or two. It's just sometimes it's like there's areas where you're able to step into this and there are areas where you're like, you're pretty stuck into a, a stage. And so when you are able to play with that, to, um, to inspire one another, the result is so different. I'm so glad you're talking about results because (laughs) the next thing on the list was what are the benefits? So Uh here we are, we're talking about all these stages and all this stuff and it's like, you know, why? Why might you want to embody your feminine more? And you actually covered some of them already. Mm-hmm. You know, number one on the list was things become easier. You're more in tune with your essence. And so that's kind of what you were just describing. Mm-hmm. And one thing that we don't always realize is just because we can and we can step into our masculine, we can get shit done as all of that. Notice, how do you feel at the end of the day? Are you like snappy or tired, overworked and exhausted? That's probably because you spend too much time not in your essence. For most women, your your feminine energy is your essence. And you might be one of the rare women where it's shifted. But like literally 90% of the population, that's how it is. And so it's a big segment of the population here, okay? And so that's how you know. So once you're able to step into this, 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 this place of ease, ending a day with being still happy and having energy, it's pretty good. I say yes to that. Yeah. And you know what I would add to that one is, is a lot of the women that come to you, this is what they say. I have a masculine job. I'm a CEO. Mm-hmm. I'm a engineer. I'm a this, I'm a that. And all day long, I spend time in my masculine. And then they say, and then when I go home with my partner, I'm still stuck in my masculine. Yeah. So one of the things they often come looking to you for is learning how to switch, mm-hmm. right? And so we don't mean to say in any of this that you can't embody <laughs> your masculine at times. Yeah, sometimes you have to do that and that's mm-hmm. great. But I think the real mastery skill for a woman is learning how to switch back and forth. Absolutely. How When you need to get something done, there's nobody else here to help you. You step in, you do it. Mm-hmm. And then when you have the ability to let go and sink into your feminine, that you can make that switch. Mm-hmm. Number two, well, guess what? If you're single and you're learning to be more feminine, you will attract a more masculine man. And what, again, remember what I said about the amazing sex life? Yes, you're having passion that lasts past the honeymoon phase. Let me tell you all about something else we see a lot with (laughs) couples we work with. (laughs) We call it reverse polarity. Mm -hmm. That's where the man in the relationship tends to be the softer, more feminine one. And the woman tends to be the harder, more masculine, get shit done, dictate how the relationship's going to go kind of person. We see this all the time. And you know what? Most of them aren't even aware they're in reverse polarity. Mm -hmm. They have no idea. Mm -hmm. The second they walk in the room, we look at each other like, oh, reverse polarity. (laughs) Again. (laughs) Again. And they don't even really realize it. And so the thing that uh, a lot of women don't realize is if they're stuck in masculine mode all the time, most likely what they're going to attract is a man who's okay sitting back in his feminine because that creates the polarity, mm-hmm. right? And polarity is 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 the sort of juxt- juxtaposition of opposites, right? And so it's taking two opposite poles on a magnet and they stick together. You try mm-hmm. to put two of the same poles together, they repel each other, mm-hmm. right? So two very masculine people will most likely repel each other, whereas one that's more feminine, one that's more masculine. We do a whole talk on polarity that's not really the the goal here but the point is is that if you understand that basic concept you'll realize that as a woman if you sink more into your feminine you're most likely going to attract a man who's more masculine Mm -hmm. number three well that's kind of we covered it here it creates more polarity in the relationship in so many so many ways it's not just the sex there's also there's something deeper the man that one is like i've got you you know and 
maybe I would think like it'd be interesting if you could, Kevin, maybe share briefly uh, with our listeners for you the difference when you've been in relationships with more uh, feminine women versus more masculine, how that impacted your the relationship and, and your experience of it. Okay, well... I, I- <laughs> As we're already getting late into the show, <laughs> I could do a whole 30-minute episode just on this. But if I, if I could sum it up really, really quickly, here's what I found. And I actually did some sort of research experiments with past partners on this. But here's what I found. I've had a couple of relationships with women who are definitely much more in their masculine. And actually, there was something that I was actually attracted to about that because, you know, maybe I don't look it, but, you know, I'm kind of a masculine guy. Like, I like to shoot guns, rock climb, downhill mountain bike, a multi-disciplined martial artist. Like, I like that kind of stuff, you know, trucks, four by four, whatever. Like, I like that kind of stuff. So there's something attractive about a woman who at least somewhat likes some of that stuff. But what I realized was is that they were always competing with me, and it was Mm. exhausting. It's literally exhausting because what would happen is the higher their masculine energy ramped up, the higher I had to make mine because without it, there wouldn't be the polarity. And then we'd just start fighting or we wouldn't get along. We'd irritate each other. And we, the, the sexual chemistry wouldn't really be there. Mm-hmm. Make, a, make a really long story short, I actually did this experiment with a partner without telling her. I realized what was happening with our polarity. And I was like, ooh, okay, so here's what I need to do. Every time we make love and it doesn't work and it's just like like all left feet, as they say, you know, and dancing, I'm going to just, no matter how tired I am, I'm going to get I'm going to fully embody my masculine and get rah, like really into it and see what happens. Every time it totally shifted what was happening in that moment. And so what I realized was in when I'm in a relationship with a woman who's more masculine, I just have to out-masculine her. Mm-hmm. And then it all works again. Or the other choice is to go way in the other direction and, and get really into, into your feminine. But you got to create that polarity. Mm-hmm. And for me, while I'm in touch with my feminine side and I can be soft and caring, it's not normal for me to be like a, the super softy guy. That's just not really who I am. So that wasn't really an option for me. So then I had to like <laughs> amp it up and get super masculine. And it was fucking exhausting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That I think described it very well. Uh, Let's give you one more benefit here before we tell you about your steps to becoming more feminine. One of the benefits is that you become more attractive to people and and things like life. Things are just drawn to you. There's literally like you become a magnet. I I see that for me happening a lot where it's like you go somewhere and people want to talk to you or like things come to you or are being gifted to you. And it's like, oh my gosh, the more I radiate and I am my feminine energy, the more I get. And there's no manipulation. There's no forcing. There's no making it happen. It has all to do with my inner state. And the more I'm able to tune into that, the better it is. And I mean, honestly, who doesn't want to feel more attractive, right? I'm like, yeah, I get it. So that's a really beautiful place to be because you get to love yourself more. You get to feel better about yourself in your body. And in turn, you are more attractive to others, but you also attract things in your life and people, higher vibration. It's a whole upgrade of your life. So I say yes. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. There's a reason why throughout our society... Um, there's all these images of beautiful feminine women. Mm. It's attractive to people. It's inspiring too. It's inspiring. And I mean, some of the world's most amazing art, whether it's sculpture, paintings, mm-hmm. music, it all centers around beautiful feminine women. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, the idea of what was considered beautiful and feminine has changed throughout <laughs> the centuries, but that's still that's the basic idea behind most of it it's what inspires us it is so i want to give you some of the steps here but before i give you the steps i want to make sure that you always connect with yourself and listen to yourself there are so many flavors of the feminine there are so many ways to tap into this i've broken it down into five different archetypes and different ways of tuning into that feminine energy so i want to say like trust yourself look around and find models and find things just because you like one thing see I'm the adventurer too, but I like high heels and I I like lipstick. Mm. 
mm. and I can do I can like both right so it's not just because I can go do the adventure thing and be like in, on the field and do these crazy things with Kevin I can also wear a gorgeous dress or like look super pretty and enjoy both just as much and to me they are all the same expression of my feminine okay so number one accept yourself for who you are you are a woman love yourself love it this i mean i think if there's only one thing that you're going to take from this if that's that and it shows up in many ways loving the fact that you're bleeding loving your body parts loving your sensitivity your vulnerability because these are actually your strength and just loving yourself as you are yeah, I mean, it sounds so simple, and yet in our society, this is so mm-hmm. huge. How many women are running around going, if I were a man, then this would be different, or oh, why do I have to bleed, or oh, oh, why do I have to, you know, like... Yeah, all if, those breasts are in the way, or I can't do this. I'm like, come on. Yeah, I mean, I think if women really just accepted themselves and said, yeah, here I am, I'm a woman, and uh-huh. let's... Like, okay, let's work with this because there's a lot that can be done here. (laughs) Absolutely. Number two, focus on self-care and um, activities that will boost your oxytocin. Oxytocin level is very important. Oxytocin is like the love hormone, the bonding hormone, and there's been a lot of research done on it. When you have high levels of oxytocin, you have a better ability to orgasm. There is a direct correlation between your level of oxytocin and your ability to achieve strong orgasms. So if you feel always depleted, if you feel tired, if making love is so hard, if having orgasms is difficult, or elusive like that's probably because you are low on this oxytocin how do you build that oxytocin is by taking care of yourself things like taking bath watching sunset watching a romantic movie uh, reading a book girl baking, time. girl time talking to a woman being in nature barefoot I mean I just gave you like eight different things there are so many more uh, but what are the things that work for you you know that that's the things that you do and you forget that there's a clock like time stops and you can be immersed in it and you feel uplifted after you've done it that's really the type of activity so prioritize that um, which is really important and the third one then is to set boundaries and setting boundaries come in very handy because It's also about saying, hey, I don't have the bandwidth for that or I need some help or I need my me time. And it could be like, hey, asking your husband to take care of the kids. Like I'm working with a couple right now and he's agreed to give her when he gets home um, like a half hour every day where she can do what she wants. She goes upstairs in the bedroom, closes the door and, and they have three kids and he takes care of the kids and she can either do a bubble bath, read a book or just do her yoga. She loves to do yoga. And they realize that when she does that, then she has more energy for him and guess what suddenly she is more willing to have sex with him too <laughs> Whoa. shocking <laughs> number four listen to your intuition very important and i think as women we have a connection to the whatever you call it divine or spirit or just other realms and our intuition that that higher self and listen to it because it knows yeah mm-hmm Number five, give yourself permission to express yourself through creation. And creative energy is feminine energy. Creation is not just making babies. Yes, you can create and make physical babies, but you can create so many things. You can make a cake. You can birth a book, a project. You can birth a child. Like, what ways do you create? Yeah, listen to that again. Go back to that. And then a uh, number six, being in touch with your femininity through your breasts. And I really want to say this is like your breasts are your gateways to your femininity. And they are the place that are, that's where your heart is. They help you to love yourself more. They help you to open up and receive more. There are so many things like our, our breasts are underused or overused because they're being used by others and for others. Learning to connect with your breasts in a way to nurture and nourish yourself. If you don't know that yet or how to do it, I can help you. I have uh, created uh, the online breast massage course that will teach you all the steps, different massage strokes and all the things related to how to care for your breasts and also your body. And you can find all all of that on my site at CelineRemy.com. Go to courses and it will be right there. I'd love to extend this invitation to you to really 
learn that really learn it because it will change your life as a woman and then number seven study get in touch with your pussy like study with people who inspire you around sexuality and help you to connect with that part of your body because again this is also a gateway here that is so underused it really is you know what's interesting to me about that one and i don't know if it's maybe it's because it's just me i have no idea if it's because i'm a guy but like you know you've done this workshop many times and, mm -hmm. and one of the uh uh things that you do in the workshop is you have women look at their pussies mm -hmm. with a mirror. And there's lots of people who've done that as part of their workshops. It's not necessarily revolutionary or groundbreaking, but it is actually for the women who do it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that amazes me every time is how many people, even in practically 2020, we're almost at, you know, uh, so many women still go, is that what I look like? Really? <laughs> how does that work again? What does this bit over here do? I'm like, really? It's your body and you don't know this? I'm like, trust me, I know exactly every inch of my penis. I know exactly <laughs> what it looks like. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this the idea is that um, I think a lot of women don't really do that. And if they did, they would definitely be more in touch with their femininity. Yeah, and then getting to know how it works, what you like, what you don't like. And then you can guide your partners to like touch you in different ways, in ways that are more pleasuring and help you with that. And so these are like some of the steps to becoming more feminine. And I'm sure we can add some more, but just start. Take one at a time and start to see how, how different you feel. And it's really quick. Once you start to really reconnect with yourself and activate that feminine energy, changes happen like massively and super quickly. And you're like, wow, I can't believe I waited so long or like this is what, what it looks like. So I want to invite you to really give yourself permission to be full into your feminine energy, find your own flavor. And I want to invite all of our male listeners to support their women on their quests here and be like hey how can i help you um be more in touch what can i do to uh, do you need some time by yourself or is there something or that i can help you with and then do that together um that will help you feel more masculine and it will help her to be more in touch with her feminine yeah and i think maybe just the very last piece that i would share is a disclaimer that we maybe should have said at the beginning of the show <laughs> but you know we're talking about masculine and feminine and we do totally understand that you know it's not necessarily tied to physical gender so there's a lot that we said in this show that even if you don't have the physical bits of a man <laughs> or of a woman that um, you can still take because you know if you're a man and you and you embody your feminine more and you want to be in your feminine more, you can still use this advice. Yeah. Same with a woman. If you're a woman and you want to be in your masculine more, then do the opposite of this advice. <laughs> <You know>? like, <laughs> so there's still value in here for everybody, no matter where you fall on the spectrum. Obviously, we tend to talk mostly about heterosexual because that's what we are and that's you know our expertise, but it applies to just about everybody. All right, anything else? That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this show as much as we did. And we will be seeing you next week. We hope you liked this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoyed this show, leave a comment and share it with your friends. And if you want more, we have an entire digital library with the best sex tips and relationship advice at CelineRemy.com. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y.com. So join us in the sex vault to continue this adventure. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing.